Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's your girl Nikki here and I'm here with another cooking tutorial. So today we're going to be making steak and chicken Philly cheese steaks, you guys. So this is all the ingredients that you will be needing. First I have here just a medium size, I think it's a plank steak here. Um, then I have some chicken tender breast tenders. They're chicken breasts, but they're cut up in like the chicken tender um, shapes. So yeah, these cook uh, really fast and they're really juicy. Um, I'm just going to be using a little bit of oil. I'm using this vegetable oil because I want to use the rest of it. You can use olive oil. You can use uh, any type of oil you have on hand. Um, I'm also going to be using a little bit of butter in this recipe hey what don't taste good with a little bit of butter and then you're gonna need a little bit of mayo um you don't have to use mayo i just personally like mayo and quote me if i'm wrong i think the original philly cheesesteak comes with mayo on it i don't know um you're also gonna be needing some wishkashire did i say <laughs> wishkashire sauce yeah <laughs> And then you're also going to be needing a medium to large uh, yellow onion. I mean, if you have white onion on hand, you can definitely use that. Um, you're also going to be needing some bell peppers. I just bought this variety pack because it was easy. And it had all the little different rainbow colors in them. You can definitely use green, just green peppers or just red peppers or whatever you like. Um, for the seasonings, pretty simple. You're going to be needing some black pepper, okay? Then you're also going to be needing some salt. I'm using a pink Himalayan salt. You can use uh, sea salt, iodized salt, the little salt with the lady with the umbrella. It don't really matter. And then you're going to be needing some fine, uh, fine, <laughs> some garlic powder and also a little bit of brown sugar. Yeah, I said brown sugar, baby. We get hot. Okay. And then we're going to be needing some hoagie rolls. Now, I find that getting the rolls out of the actual bakery at my local grocery store is way better than like the already store-bought roll, store rolls. And they were only $1.98, you guys. So then you're also going to need some charge. You know, some charge, 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 charge. So we're going to be using provolone cheese. You can definitely mix it up. Add whatever kind of cheese you want. And also some minced garlic, you guys. With my recipes, you guys, you can just add or take out whatever you prefer. There's no strict anything, okay? So now I'm just going to go ahead and chop this onion on up. And I just um, wanted you guys to kind of see how I decided to chop the onion. So, yeah. So you're just going to chop the onion in um, halves. And then you're also going to go ahead and chop the ends of the onions off where the stems and things like that grow out as well and then we're going to go ahead and um peel away the the skin of the onion um is it skin onion uh, whatever look y'all i am not good with explaining things so look bear with me okay so yeah i'm just peeling away the skin of the onion here okay so I'm just going to do that to both um, pieces of onion. And instead of, I mean, you can definitely chop your onion smaller, but I decided to kind of, I like onions. I'm an onion lover, um, but some people don't like onions. So yeah, you can definitely cut them smaller if you like, but I just went ahead and just sliced them um, kind of, I don't know, how do you explain it? Just up and down, I guess just sideways sideways chopped onion okay so we're just gonna go ahead and slice both of those onions up like so get them nice i'm just gonna pick it up and just kind of show you the shape that i chop my onions in okay and i'm just gonna go ahead and do the other one So yeah, so now I'm just going to put them on a paper plate that I have and just set it aside so when I'm ready for it. So yeah, I'm going to show you how I chop my peppers. I don't know why, I just wanted to. So you just chop the head off of and just pull out that 
pitted middle where all the seeds are. Just pull it out, toss it in the trash, and yeah, you won't have to worry about um, seeds. There are a little bit of seeds left, but it don't really bother me. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and chop the peppers in slices like that, kind of medium-sized slices. Um, I did kind of want my peppers to kind of be smaller than my onions. So I just went ahead and chopped them in um, medium size long strips, I guess, if you want to say. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead, after I cut that all up, I'm going to go ahead and take the strips, turn them sideways, and just chop, I guess, if I had to describe it in a word, in small cubes, you guys. So I'm just going to show you guys how I do that really quick. So now that I have the, all those chopped up in little bitty pieces, I did go ahead and do the rest of the peppers off camera for you guys. And I did go ahead and place them all on the plate, another paper plate, and set them to the side. So the longest thing that it takes in this recipe is basically chopping everything up. But in the long run, it does save you time when you prep everything ahead of time and you can just go okay so now i'm cutting up the plank steak um usually you want to cut the steak against the grain so you don't take away of any of the tenderness but i think this day i was just like trying to eat i was hungry the kids was hungry hubby was hungry so i just went on in child with the knife and i just began to slice okay and i'm slicing them in the long strips and then i'm going back in and kind of cutting them like i did the pepper and then cutting them in like cube sizes or whatever so they can be like bite-sized pieces so when i cook them they will cook a little faster and they will tenderize um as well um faster as well so this is what i'm doing here so i got all the steak chopped up like so i did go ahead and do the chicken off camera you want to make sure you chop wash your chicken before you cook your chicken and then i just chopped it up in bite-sized cubes as well like so so now moving on we're going to go ahead and just dump all that oil i thought i was going to just sprinkle a little bit but i just dumped it all on up in there like that okay then you do want to like have your fire on like a medium heat then I'm going to just take half of those onions because in this pot I am going to do the steak and then I'm going to do the chicken in another pot. So yeah, you just want to take half of those onions and just sprinkle them on in there. And then you want to take half of the peppers and put them in there with the onions as well. So I'm just going to go ahead, like I said, and I'm taking half of each pepper, the yellow, the red, and the green, and I'm just going to go ahead and saute those with these onions that I have so now <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and um, as my heat rose to temperature I'm just gonna go ahead and saute those and that oil that I put in the pan I really like this wok pan because it really gets hot and it um, puts a good sear on the meat and things like that so um, that's why I'm using this wok pan for the steak because I want kind of want to cook it fast and not too long so now I'm going to go ahead and add in the garlic right now, um, the minced garlic, and put that in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in the um, chopped steak pieces that I cut up in the video earlier. And I'm just going to give that all a little mix there. Then I'm just going to use the seasonings that I showed you guys earlier in the um, video. I think it was the salt, the black pepper, and the garlic powder, the Worcestershire sauce, and the brown sugar. Sorry you guys, I don't have measurements for the amount of seasoning that I use in my recipes 
Um, just, I don't know. Unless I'm, like, cooking something I'm not familiar with, it's kind of the only time that I actually use um, measurements or, you know, something like that. You know, the way my grandma taught me is, you know, you eyeball it, you taste it, and you add more or add less, whatever it is that you need. So, that is what I'm doing right here. So, then I'm going to just mix all that together. Get everything nice and incorporated with the steak and the vegetables. So that is what I'm doing here. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some mushrooms. I did not have the mushrooms in the beginning of the video. Because I wasn't originally going to use the mushrooms. But I opened my refrigerator and I seen them there. And I was like, hey, let's add some mushrooms in there. So that is what I did there. Now I did excuse me let me correction i did measure out the Worcestershire shawls because you can use too much of this so i did use four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce um in there so i did measure that port okay and then this is where i'm just taking a nice little sprinkle of dabble of blabble dabble <laughs> of brown sugar and adding it in there as well and then mixing that all up. I was always told, you know, you add what you add. Don't add too much. It's better to add less than too much. So then at the end, when you taste it, you can always add more. So that's kind of the idea I go by. So then I just cover that up and let that simmer. And I'm just going to quickly speed through the uh, chicken portion of this because I'm actually repeating the same steps that I did with the steak. Um, the only thing different, I guess you would say, is that I added the mushrooms in when I added the veggies, so they got nice and sauteed and soft with the chicken. So yeah, I'm just adding the peppers, the onion, the mushrooms, the minced garlic, and now I'm going to add the chicken pieces that I chopped up and cubed, and then we're just going to mix all that up, incorporate it together, and then we're just going to repeat the, um, Worcestershire and the brown sugar and the pepper and salt and garlic powder as well just like we did the steak nothing different here on this end i mean you could add something a little bit spicy if you wanted to maybe like some cayenne pepper or crushed red peppers to give it like a little kick but yeah pretty much i just prepare the chicken the same way that i did the steak as you can see here Then I'm just going to put a lid on that as well. So while those two things are kind of simmering and getting all nice and juicy and tender, I'm going to go ahead and toast the hoagie rolls. Um, I'm using this flat top grill here. You can use a cast iron skillet on the stove or just a regular skillet if you want. doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, so I'm just taking a little bit of butter and I'm just going to make sure I lather the um, surface of the griddle. And I think I got it set on probably the highest temperature because I want to get a nice toast on the bun. So yeah, I'm just going to add the butter like so and swirl it around. So then for the hoagies, I'm going to slit them like right down the middle. And then we're just going to just open it up like so. Make sure all the inside, <laughs> how to adjust the camera, I'm sorry. And um how to make sure all the inside is exposed and you're just going to flatten that kind of push that flat down on the griddle and so i'm just going to repeat that with about four buns here um just kind of the same well not kind of but the same thing you're just splitting it down the middle and then pressing it down that one did not want to stay down girl it's like you ain't toasting me today but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if you had like something heavy, like a heavy skillet that you can place on top as well. That will kind of help the edges to get nice and crispy as well with the weight around it. So, yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and check on the steak. Mm -mm -mm, look at that. Look nice and juicy, tender. Now we're going to go ahead and lay down the slices of provolone cheese. I think I used about six slices in the steak and six slices in the chicken as well so you just lay that down and then we just 
cover it back with the top. At this point, the heat is off of the chicken and the steak, and we're just using all the heat that's already in the food to melt the cheese because you don't want to overcook the chicken breast or the steak. So the heat is off at this point. So now we're going to go over here and check on our rolls and honey. They are per fact again gotta adjust the camera one of the kids probably ran by and hit it as um, i don't even know you see how it's nice and crisp around the edges that is exactly what you are looking for so now it's time to assemble honey we got the mayo a little thin layer of mayo on there and then we're gonna go over into this steak honey and let me just tell you i'm about to give y'all some food porn with this cheese pool going on look at this look 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 at this cheese pool that is just look at all those juices at the bottom so you're getting a nice juicy sandwich and not no old dry sandwich you want to just sop all them juices up on that bread like that and i put steak on one half and then i'm gonna put chicken on the other half of the bread say it ain't so it's so okay and this is what it turned out to be you guys oh my goodness that looks so delicious it was so delicious and i served mine or my family with a side of caesar salad you definitely can do french fries but i was feeling salad this night you guys so i guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and please don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on another one of my videos thank you and see you later Bye bye